Oh, oh, I've been sleeping for weeks. What's going on? Oh, a new form of synesty, but not really. It's the Wiglet thing again, Convergent Evolution. It looks super similar, but it's a completely different Pokemon. Not like regional variants that are the same Pokemon, but variant. But it's strange that its name, Poltergeist, pulls more from Poltegeist, but everything officially said about it states that it's more similar to synesty. So I wonder if it will evolve. I suppose, like Sinistee, the face is on the container rather than the ghostly liquid inside, and it's got the pinky out for being fancy. But what is the container? It's not a teacup at all. In fact, it's not even anything all that common in the West, and that's because it's an East Asian style tea caddy for storing matcha powder. Or a matcha jar, which you make matcha tea out of. Hence the name being Poltegeist, but with matcha instead of tea. Or even just think Ocha, which is Japanese for tea, but like, matcha is the most iconic Japanese tea. Um, but yeah, so it's Poltergeist now, and if you don't know, a poltergeist is a kind of ghost, specifically the kind that haunt homes and fling around objects, mostly things like books and dishes. So this really is just perfect. Plus, if you wanted to stretch the name origin section of a Loxton video out just a bit longer, you could also ignore that G in there, and now the name contains Chai, which is Chinese, Hindi, and many other languages in the area's word for tea. So yeah, when you say, um, yeah, I'd like a Chai tea, you're saying tea tea. The words you're looking for are spiced Chai, or masala Chai, even Chai masala is acceptable. Also, maybe unrelated, but Chai can mean living thing in Hebrew, and I suppose being a poltergeist, Poltergeist is now a living matcha, hmm? Plus, did you know that just like ghosts, 90% of matcha is fake? Like, take this stuff I'm flinging around. If this were the real stuff, then people in the know would be pissed in the comments. And I would be very poor. But it's not like how wasabi in most stores and sushi restaurants is fake and actually just colored horseradish. Rather, it's more akin to the whole, it's not real champagne unless it's from the Champagne region of France. You know, gatekeeping garbage humans, you know. But at least in the case of matcha, there's like actual noteworthy differences in quality and more importantly, the methods on how it's made. But let's focus just a little bit more on the Pokemon here. It's got a whole extra layer of perfect in its design. Ghosts like to hide, right? Sometimes in plain sight by possessing an object, yeah. Well, get this. When tea was first brought over to the West from Asia, it was very expensive, as this fancy new foreign drink has traveled for at least 4,000 miles, either by camel across the Himalayas, or by Portuguese ship, hence the Paldean connection there. But being so nice and expensive, it was held under lock and key, basically. Oh, but you don't want to store your matcha in your safe with your jewels and stuff. They'll get all powdery. So what do you do? Not slap yourself in the face with matcha hand. Well, you hide it in plain sight. See, a lot of this exported tea was stored in fine china, or containers and caddies made of fine porcelain, which, like, is literally Portuguese's head. Uh, but there was a problem. See, China invented porcelain and kept the recipe a secret for centuries. So the rich folk who bought this tea suddenly also had this new fancy porcelain container for it, which stuck out in their cupboards and pantries, just screaming, hey, I'm valuable, look at me, the TV. Normally a thief in your house wouldn't think twice about digging through your pantry. But now there's this incredibly obviously fancy container with extremely valuable powder in it. You could steal and sell that. And thus another factor leading into the growing popularity of fine china in the West. Richer folk wanted more plates and containers made of the stuff because it's fancy, yes, but also because that way, their precious tea caddies wouldn't stick out so much. Is it a container with highly valuable tea in it? Or does it just have like a spoon or a couple slices of ginger? If it doesn't stick out, maybe a thief won't look. Straight matcha powder is not good. And even when the West finally figured out how to make porcelain, they still tried to stick with the idea of making it look nice, but not stick out as something particularly valuable. They wanted it all to blend in with the stuff they already had from China. They wanted to hide it all in plain sight. 
like a ghost. A tricky balance for sure, and one that Poltergeist fits into well. Quote, Poltergeist has a liking for old houses and may make its home in them. By day it remains in cool, dark places. Hiding in plain sight, just in some old guy's pantry. Also, store in a cool dark place is common tea storage instruction. I think even, yeah, store in a cool dry place. Dry isn't the same as dark, but I have seen in a dark place on tea before. It sometimes mends cracked or broken things in homes where it's taken up residence. Poltergeist may even take it upon itself to repair broken tableware and other objects. So here's a fun bit. Sure, it's cracked and old and broken, but now it's been repaired with its own matcha powder, which is like kintsugi the Japanese art of repairing broken porcelain or pottery with lacquer dusted or mixed with powdered gold, sometimes even silver or platinum. The fact that Poltergeist is a ghost type that was repaired Kintsugi style is very fitting because there's a bit of philosophy that goes along with Kintsugi. It treats breakage and repair as a part of the history of an object rather than something to hide or disguise. A ghost is still alive, in a way, despite having died, and Kintsugi repaired pottery still functions as pottery despite having been broken. And now, it is made all the more beautiful with its repairing. It's very similar to the traditional Japanese aesthetic slash philosophy of uabisabi, which is the acceptance of things that are impermanent or imperfect, like the transience of the scraped lines in a zen garden and the dragging of the zen scraper around rocks and bumps in the garden instead of striving to get rid of such imperfections. Tea caddies and tea bowls with imperfections on them aren't considered a bad thing. In fact, they are considered a good thing, and the part of the caddy with the most imperfections is often dubbed the face or the front of it in Uabisabi, which may be a part of why Poltergeist's eyebrows here are uneven and why it has those three black dots which are like the dimples of imperfection that sometimes happen to porcelain or other types of pottery where the glaze didn't stick well enough or wasn't applied thickly enough, and it spending its own time mending cracked or broken things in homes where it's taken up residence basically just carries on those ideals of wabi-sabi itself. It's like both meanings of it. Just because something or someone is broken doesn't mean it cannot be repaired and be made even more beautiful than it was before, which really is quite sweet. But let's talk about the fun part now! Poltergeist scatters its matcha powder on people and food, and then whoever touches or ingests that powder glows for a moment and then passes out. And then Poltergeist absorbs their life force from the matcha powder it sprinkled on them. Fun! It is a spooky ghost after all, and this is sort of akin to the caffeine in many teas, giving you energy, but then... The crash afterwards always makes you sleepy, even sleepier than you were before the caffeine. But despite this, its signature ability is hospitality, which, when an ally enters a battle, it showers its ally with hospitality, restoring a small bit of the ally's HP. But why is that? Well, because in Japan and many other countries in Asia, the tea ceremony is a cultural activity involving the ceremonial preparation and presentation of tea, which in Japan is matcha specifically. But what is matcha? Exactly. Well, it's this thing that I've been throwing everywhere. It is green tea in powder form, rather than the crushed up leaves you see most teas being made of. Well, I guess... I guess it still is crushed up leaves, hence the ghost grass type here too, but in this case, the leaves are so finely ground that it turns into powder. And then to make the matcha tea, you mix the matcha directly into hot water or milk that you're going to drink, and you don't strain any of it because it just dissolves into the liquid. In Japan, this was traditionally done during tea ceremonies, which are classified as either an informal tea gathering or a formal tea gathering, just based on how important it was. But no matter the kind of tea ceremony, it's all about showing your guests fine hospitality and invigorating full-bodied matcha tea which this is not. Only the finest quality matcha powder can be used in a tea ceremony, which tends to last up to four hours. And this last bit is probably a big part of why Poltergeist was born from the regrets of an old tea master who was so obsessed with perfecting the art of the tea ceremony that he drove away everyone around him. He went way too overboard with the idealized, fancy, austereness of tea ceremonies and forgot the fact 
that they are about hospitality and caring for those around him. So now, Poltergeist is so fixated on fixing other household objects with its matcha powder based kintsugi, and it always heals a little bit of the HP of its allies during battle, sort of as a way to atone for the shortcomings of the old man. But despite this, it still has the uncontrollable instinct to go around using its matcha powder to put others to sleep and drain the life force out of them because it is perpetually reliving and repeating what the old man was accidentally doing to his loved ones by being so fixated on throwing perfect tea ceremonies instead of focusing on why those ceremonies exist in the first place. Friendly hospitality. In a way, Poltergeist is also a Tsukomagami, a yokai that is an everyday household object that has been filled with kami, or spirit, due to reaching 100 years of age or use, or sometimes when used in a sudden, sometimes tragic event, like this case. It can be used to explain a lot of object mon, actually, but now my biggest follow-up question here is, what is it carrying? Like, is it a stick for matcha? A matcha scoop? Why not just use your fingers? Well, the answer is yes. It's a chashaku, or a bamboo matcha scoop. They are usually accompanied with the iconic matcha tea whisk, or chasen, but I assume that the evolution is going to have that. If it evolves, that is. But then again, maybe not. Tsukomagami are created out of very old tools, and these whisks are carved from a single piece of bamboo and thus quickly become worn and damaged with use. Not exactly something that can last a hundred years or even be repaired. Plus, the host of a fancy tea ceremony should be using a new one each time so it always looks and performs its best. As for the rest of these tea sets though, oh yeah, they last. There are plenty of still-in-use antique tea sets, and antiques do often have little ghost stories surrounding them too, so maybe Poltergeist is just hextuply perfect. I also like how the green swirl is like the steam coming up off the tea. That's a really nice touch. But what do you think? Should we have more object mon? Let me know down below and never stop using your noggin. I have to go die now. Green. I have to dye myself green. It's all over the microphone. I am a dirty boy. It will smell like matcha in here for weeks. Look, it looks like really bad pee. But it's actually really bad pee.